The Spanish Grand Prix is over, and whilst Max Verstappen dominated the race, it was actually one of the more interesting and entertaining races of the year, in my opinion. We had a massive variance in strategy, with seven different strategy options being in play during the race itself, and that meant that behind Max Verstappen, we saw one of the most wild and mixed-up races for a long time. And today, we're going to be taking a look at the data to see what we learned from an incredible Spanish Grand Prix. Now, let's get to the video. As usual, I'll be talking about the likes of Ferrari, Aston Martin, Mercedes and Red Bull a little bit later on, so stick around for that. Going into the Spanish Grand Prix, one of the big questions was, will the removal of the final chicane change the ability for the cars to follow and overtake? The thought process was that the car's flow will not be broken up and that will lead to an increase in on-track overtakes, which is kind of ironic given the original reason that the chicane was invented was to try and increase overtakes due to the dirty air going through the final corner. But did this actually have an effect? Well, the short answer is yes. As mentioned in my preview and predictions video, last year there was a total of 48 on-track overtakes. However, this year there was 107 on-track overtakes, making it the race with the largest number of overtakes in a dry race since the 2016 Chinese Grand Prix, which had a record-breaking 170 on-track overtakes. This goes to show that behind Verstappen, there was actually a great race with a serious number of overtakes. In order to help with the overtaking, we also got to see a multi-stop race. I mentioned in my preview and predictions video that it would be a two-stop race, in which a couple of people thought was actually a bit silly of a prediction from me. But we actually saw the vast majority do a two-stop, and one team had to go all the way to a three-stop strategy. But which team was this? Well, sadly for the American team, it was Haas, as Haas once again had a very difficult race when it came to tyre wear. Back in Bahrain, we saw that Haas was an incredible car over one lap, but when the race came, they sunk like a stone due to high tyre wear. And in Spain, it seems like this happened once again. To show this, I have got the race pace of Kevin Magnussen, Yuki Tsunoda and Oscar Piastri to show just how bad things were for Haas. In this graph, you can see that when K-Mag changes tyres, his pace massively increases. However, note how quickly his lap times increase versus cars around him. It really just showed that a major issue for the Haas car was their tyre wear. They had fantastic one lap pace, but as soon as they get to a race, didn't they work the tyres too hard, and this leads to a slow race pace and them struggling throughout a stint. Due to a lot of the opening circuits being street circuits, tyre wear has been very low, and this has masked the inherent issues with a Haas car. For McLaren, Lando Norris's race came to a crushing end before it really got started, after coming together with the Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton in the first corner. But even after recovering to the pits, Norris had a very difficult race and ended it all the way down in P17, even finishing behind the Williams of Alex Albon, even though the Williams was by some distance the slowest car this weekend. But why was this when the McLaren was so great in qualifying? Well, to find out, let's take a look at the lap times of both Albon and Norris throughout the race to see what we can learn. Overall, Albon is significantly slower than Norris throughout the race, which is what we would expect to see, especially when Norris changes onto the soft compound of tyres for the final stint. In this comparison between their fastest laps, we can see that going into Turn 1, Norris actually had DRS, which is why his top speed is so great versus Albon. But what about elsewhere? Well, we can see that Norris is able to carry more speed, Again, which is kind of what we expect, given the McLaren has so much more downforce than the Williams. However, when it gets to the end of straights, at least when Norris is not using DRS, Norris loses out massively. And this is a critical issue with McLaren and Norris. They lose way too much time due to their draggy car down a straight. And unfortunately, this hinders them when trying to go forward because quite frankly, they just cannot overtake due to the amount of drag that their car produces. One midfield team which had a great race was, somewhat unsurprisingly I guess, 
the Alpine team, as it is becoming more and more clear that they are the top midfield team in F1, and on their day, they can knock on the door and beat maybe one or two of the top four team drivers. In fact, they had very similar pace to one of the top four team's drivers, and with that in mind, let's take a look at the lap times of Charles Leclerc, Esteban Ocon, and Pierre Gasly. And what can we see in this? On the hard compound of tyres in the final stint, Gasly and Leclerc actually have very similar pace. And they were trading pace for faster laps between the two drivers. But in the end, it was Gasly who was in P10, and in the points, whereas it was Leclerc who was in P11 and just outside of the points. With that in mind, let's take a look at both drivers' fastest laps of the race to see who was faster where. In a straight line, Leclerc was significantly faster than Gasly. However, through all of the corners, especially going into the faster corners, you could see once again Leclerc was really struggling and seemingly lacking confidence in his Ferrari. And this means that he loses out all of the advantage that he makes up in the straight line. For Alpine, this is a great thing that they can continue to build on after a great podium in Monaco. I just want to say that if you are enjoying the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. The majority of viewers are not currently subscribed to the channel, and if you're one of those, I would greatly appreciate it if you just tap that little sub button. Now, let's get back to the video and let's start talking about the top four teams, and let's start with Ferrari. For Ferrari, this was a very difficult race for both Leclerc and Carlos Sainz. However, when you take a look at the laps of both drivers, you start to see something very interesting. And for me, this once again raises more questions about what Ferrari are actually trying to do. Back in Bahrain and in Saudi Arabia, I said Ferrari really struggled when on the hardest compound of tyres. And guess what? It seems like this was the case again in Spain. And I have to question their strategy decisions. Looking at Sainz and Leclerc's pace on the soft tyres, Ferrari were looking like they were in a good position, at least on the softer tyres. And they stopped the cars despite the fact that both drivers were not losing any time when they were on the softs. I feel like a better option for Ferrari would have been to do two stints on softs and one stint on the mediums, similar to what Mercedes opted to do in the race, and that is not just because both Mercedes had great pace, but instead because the data shows as does historical results from this year, that Ferrari are not consistent when it comes to the harder tyre. Even Leclerc wanted to stop for the soft tyre in his final stint, but they refused to give him those tyres, despite the fact that there were 23 laps in the race, and Lewis managed 23 laps with much more fuel on softs, and Leclerc had one fresh set of softs left to use. For me, this is just one of the many issues that Ferrari need to solve if they hope to win a single race this year. That being said, overall, Ferrari had better race pace than Aston Martin. For Aston Martin, Spain was, by a long distance, the toughest race of the year for them, as their pace was a long way off the likes of Mercedes and Red Bull, and actually they had a slower race pace than Ferrari, which is actually a big shock. And to show this off, I'm going to compare the lap times of Fernando Alonso to Charles Leclerc. Even though Leclerc had slower pace and signs, he actually had very comparable pace to Alonso. In fact, in the middle stint of the race, Leclerc on softs manages to have very consistent soft tyre lap times, but Alonso had much less consistent pace. For Fernando, this home race was not an ideal result. And for them as a team, it all came undone by a mistake in qualifying. Alongside this, Aston Martin did not have great top speed during the race, even though they did have DRS. And we can see that by looking at the top speed for all drivers. Both Aston Martins occupied two of the bottom three positions, only behind the old dominant Max Verstappen, who didn't even need DRS in this Grand Prix. For Mercedes, the Spanish Grand Prix was the perfect result as this race essentially confirmed that getting rid of the zero pod concept was the best decision for them as a team as both Lewis Hamilton and George Russell had incredible race pace with very low degradation to go alongside the great race pace. They had low degradation which you could see when Lewis Hamilton managed to go on soft tyres for the first stint and do 23 laps. When comparing the laps of Hamilton to Sainz, you can see very clearly why Hamilton was able to blow past Carlos. 
when Carlos changed to mediums, his lap times were still comparable to Hamilton who was on old soft tyres, despite the fact that the undercut was very large at Barcelona. This meant that when Hamilton changed onto those medium tyres, he was significantly faster than Carlos Sainz, and then changing back to softs at the end sealed the deal for Lewis. The upgrades that Ferrari brought have clearly been given them issues, but for Mercedes, their upgrades that they brought to Monaco was confirmation that they are now on the right track and can start closing the gap to the Red Bulls of Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez. And speaking of them, for Red Bull and Max Verstappen, the Spanish Grand Prix was a walk in the park and the entire race, I feel like he was just cruising around the circuit despite being consistently faster than any driver out on track. Moving on to the next race in Montreal, that circuit should also suit them nicely as there are plenty of straights on that circuit. However, there are some chicanes and that should actually help the likes of Aston Martin going into that race. So, what did we learn from the Spanish Grand Prix? McLaren has great qualifying pace, but their race pace just does not live up to the expectations from what they can do in qualifying. Haas are way too hard on their tyres, and that really compromises their Grand Prix results. Aston Martin had their most difficult race yet, and could be starting to fall behind due to the upgrades coming from the bigger teams, and Mercedes have moved potentially to being the second fastest team in the field. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.